The chi-square for independence is designed to determine if there is a statistically significant association between two categorical variables. In this example, we study the survival data for the Titanic disaster of 1912. Then we perform a chi-square test for independence to determine whether or not the difference in the survival rates of the three classes of passengers is statistically significant. The first step is to set up the hypotheses. The null hypothesis is that there is no association between the passenger status and the survival rates. The alternative hypothesis is that there is an association between the passenger status and survival rates. The second step is to compute the test statistic. We start by computing the expected counts and we place the expected counts in a table that has the same dimensions as the table containing the original data. The expected counts are computed using a row total times a column total divided by the table total. To compute the expected counts, it is helpful to have a calculator. The expected count for the first class passengers who survived would be computed by taking the row total of 499, multiplying by the column total of 325, divided by the table total of 1316. And this is equal to 123.233. To compute the expected count for the second class passengers who survived, we take the rows to column total of 285 and divide by the table total of 1316. And this is equal to 108.066. The expected count for the third class passengers who survived would be the row total of 499 times the column total of 706 divided by the table total of 1316. And this computes to 267.700. The expected count for the first class passengers who died would be the row total of 817 times the column total of 325 divided by the table total of 1316. And this is equal to 201.766. The expected count for the second class passengers who died would be the row total of 817 times the column total of 285 divided by the table total of 1316. And this is equal to 176.933. The expected count for the third class passengers who died would be the row total of 817 times the column total of 706 divided by the table total of 1316. And this is equal to 438.299. These expected counts are the counts we would expect to see if there is no association between passenger status and the survival rates. So now we are in a position to compute the test statistic. We use the symbol chi square, the Greek letter chi square, and it would be the sum, which we can represent using a Greek letter sigma, over all of the cells in the table of the observed counts minus the expected count squared, all divided by the expected count. So starting in the first row with the first class passengers who survived, the observed count is 203. We subtract the expected count of 123.233. Square this difference, divide by 123.233, and then repeat this process five more times for the remaining cells in the table. So for the second class passengers who survived, the observed count is 118 minus the expected count of 108.066 squared divided by the expected count of 108.066. For the third class passengers who survived, the observed count is 178 minus the expected count of 267.700. Square this difference divided by the expected count of 267.700. Move to the second row. For the first class passengers who died, the observed count is 122 minus the expected count of 201.766. Square this difference, divide by the expected count of 201.766. For the second class passengers who died, the observed count is 167 minus 
the expected count of 176.933. Square this difference, divide by the expected count of 176.933. For the third class passengers who died, the observed count is 528. Subtract the expected count of 438.299. Square this difference, divide by the expected count of 438.299. Put all these numbers into the calculator. This could take a little while to do the subtractions, square the results, do the divisions, and then add up all the numbers. When you finish this, you'll end up with 133.049. And then this is the value of the test statistic. The test statistic is a measure of the difference between the observed and the expected counts. In this case, we have a pretty large difference. The third step is to compute the p-value. To compute the p-value, we need to use a chi-squared distribution. To determine the degrees of freedom, we need to use the dimensions of the table. This particular two-way table in the example has two rows, one for the survivors, one for those who died. So the number of rows is equal to two. And it has three columns, one for the first class, second class, and third class passengers. Then to find the degrees of freedom to use, we take the number of rows minus one times the number of columns minus one. In this example, two minus one times three minus one which is equal to 1 times 2, or 2. So we should use a chi-square distribution with 2 degrees of freedom. So I'm going to sketch a chi-square distribution. These distributions are a little different than the normal distributions. They start at 0, and they have a long right tail. They're skewed to the right. Okay, so we're going to use a chi-square distribution with 2 degrees of freedom. Put in the value of our test statistic, 133.049. The p-value is equal to the area of the right tail. To compute the p-value, open up StatCrunch. Go to Stat, Calculators, Chi-Square. Enter the degrees of freedom, which in this case is 2. I need to change the direction for the probability to be greater than. And then enter the value for the test statistic. 133.049. Press compute. In this case, we obtain zero from the calculator. It's not exactly zero, but it is approximately equal to zero. So we end up with a p-value that is very, very close to zero. Our last step is to interpret the results. The p-value in this case is extremely small, so we have very strong evidence against the null hypothesis and the differences in the survival rates by passenger status are statistically significant. In this case, the differences are also very important from a practical point of view. If you were to compute the percentages of first-class passengers, second-class passengers, and third-class passengers that survived, you would see that there's a considerable differences between them.